the Land Rover Defender is one of our favorite vehicles. Upon its return to the American market in 2021 after being absent since the mid-1990s, it was selected our SUV of the year. The 2020 Land Rover Defender 110, a nicely sized midsize SUV with an available third row that no one should spend much time in, is the revival of the icon. Defender enthusiasts were thrilled to see the Defender 90, a two-door SUV with a shorter wheelbase that was modeled around the basic design of the first 4x4 even though it is now much larger and more opulent, arrive the following year. Around 10% of Defender purchasers are interested in the 90, a rarity in this price range and size category. The V8, which Land Rover eventually added to the Defender's lineup of four- and six-cylinder engines, has even narrower appeal. The newest Defender member ought to be more appealing over the long run. The third-row seat in the 110, which is an important constraint, is addressed by the 2023 Land Rover Defender 130, which lengthens the SUV. The third row of the 130 is more nicer to sit in with more space, a window, and a glass canopy to prevent claustrophobia. It also has more room than the third row of the 110 and cantilevers an additional 13.4 inches of body length behind its rear wheels. Three males who were all over 6 feet tall were seated behind one another in a queue. Each of the three had enough headroom and legroom to avoid having their knees contact the seat in front of them. The third row is far from ideal, despite how much better it is. The 110s are simpler to clamber into, but that's not a particularly high standard. The Agile won't have any issues, but the uncoordinated or bulkier people may still find the opening a little uncomfortable. The wheel wells also encroach into the cabin to such a degree that passengers must bend their feet over them, even though the third row is unquestionably more spacious. The fact that the second and third rows of the 130 seats don't totally fold flat is the biggest disappointment. A cargo space with tiers can be created by angling the seatbacks forward. While looking at the vehicle from back with the tailgate open, you first notice a bump, followed by an uneven level for the folded down third row, another bump, and then another level for the second row, which sits on a slight slope. The 130 has 88.9 cubic feet greater total cargo space as a result, but because it is not set up on a flat floor, it will be difficult to load anything. Another letdown? Unlike the 110 and 90 variants, which are smaller, the Defender 130 does not come with a V8 engine. It shares two mild hybrid engine options with other Defender vehicles. The 3.0-liter Ingenium i6 engine in the Defender 130 P300 has a lower output of 296 horsepower and 295 pounds to foot, whereas the i6 in the P400 has a higher output of 395 horsepower and 406 pounds to foot and 8-speed automatic transmission is mated to both. We traveled in a Defender 130 P400 SE with a high output engine that costs $87,375 in Sedona Red, a brand new, exclusive color. The 130 drives very similarly to the smaller Defender 110 because it has the same wheelbase, unibody construction, suspension, and powertrain with that vehicle. At lower speeds, the vehicle's added bulk is noticeable. As you press the pedal, there is a little bit of a lag, but after you reach cruising and highway speeds, the engine responsiveness improves significantly. On paved roads, though, the SUV's added length and weight are hardly perceptible, particularly during the largely on-road journey we took from North Carolina to Meadows of Dan in Virginia before continuing to a third location back in North Carolina. You are once more made aware of the 130's extra mass when you come to a stop. The stubby gearshift lever, which may be a touch finicky and makes it more difficult than required to find the appropriate gear, is not something we like. This is especially true when trying to find neutral quickly so that we can shift into four low. And considering how well the Defender performs off-road, you might find yourself in that situation frequently. We spent a full day testing out the Land Rover's permanent four-wheel drive, two-speed transfer case, locking rear and center differentials, and standard air suspension at one of the three Land Rover Experience Centers in the United States, in this case on the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina. The 38-degree approach angle of the 130 is the same as that of the 110. However, you must pay attention to the departure angle with the longer back end since the loaded diaper tail restricts this dimension to 28.5 degrees. On a track with some challenging obstacles, deep water crossings, the SUV can wade through 35 inches of water, and fantastic off-camber parts intended to twist the frame and launch wheels into the air. It was never a problem. Every good thing. Overnight, the ground on the course froze, but gradually rising midday temperatures quickly thawed the hard clay, turning it into greasy mud, however the Defender was unaffected. All day, no winches were required, though we did test the underbody armor a few times without ever being in danger of tottering. We discovered that the mirrors don't fold in as closely to the body as we'd planned on the narrower sections of the path, in fact, 
they barely fold in at all, making it virtually pointless to even bother. The SUV's four low, which was enabled by putting it in neutral and pressing a button, handled difficult slopes and descents without any problems. The mode menu appears on the center screen when you press the terrain response button. However, in one ascent up a series of rock faces and boulders, we started in drive and auto and then switched to rock crawl halfway up for an aggressive mix of braking and traction. Mud was the best option for most of the terrain we traversed. Although it worked, driving became more jerky and we eventually switched back to auto because it felt like we had to push through a force field of brakes. Put the transmission in manual, choose S1, and release the brake to activate hill descent control. The height adjustable air springs in the independent multi-link front and rear suspension enable an increase in ground clearance from the standard 8.5 inches to 11.5 inches. The air springs offer a very wide range of movement and demonstrate their ability to deliver a comfortable ride on any terrain and at any height. With a second view that may be enlarged to indicate the location of the tire where it touches the ground, a camera view aids the driver in seeing the trail ahead. In order to see while placement over obstacles in real time, the clear sight see-through hood incorporates a downward-facing camera that gives the impression that you are gazing through the hood to the ground below. The company has labored to develop a more durable system employing a more sophisticated electronic architecture, so don't worry if this sounds possibly too cool for Land Rover given its history of problematic entertainment systems. During the course of three days, we experienced no problems with it. So, despite its strange appearance and larger size than its siblings, the Defender 130 is a genuine Defender. According to Land Rover executives, the Defender 130 might make up as much as 25% of the total. The same Slovakian plant in Nitra, which can readily adjust a demand for each variety, produces all of the types. The starting prices for the P300 and P400 are $69,475 and $79,775, respectively. Our SE, a very base trim level, cost $87,3765 with various extras. Defender 130s are on hand, however many clients prefer to order ahead of time. The Defender family outsold the Land Rover Range Rover Sport as the brand's top seller in the United States in 2022.